The second casting that you're going to do for this project is a, it's called a loose pattern. Your pattern is going to, you're going to actually use a pattern that's not attached to a board. And it, ha it has some sort of a complex parting line. What I mean by parting line is, before, the parting line was right on the halfway point. On this pattern, the parting line, if you look at it, if you're going to try to get this thing out of the sand, you have to actually take and cut the parting line that is non-symmetrical, okay? It's going to go up around the tail, around the other tail. And this pattern was made specially so that it will come out of the sand. If you look at it, it's fairly complex. There's what we call draft. The draft is the angle on the side of it that allows it to be pulled out of the sand. Notice that there is draft on both sides of the airplane so that the top can come out, okay? And around the wing, okay, you really don't need any draft because you're just separating at that the edge there. But along the tail section here, the top part is dra has draft going to the, to the coal, or the drag, depending on which way we put it in the mold, and, and the opposite on the bottom part of the tail, okay? So what we need to do is figure out how we're going to put this in the mold visualize how the metal is going to flow into this casting. I think I'm going to put this in the drag so the airplane is actually going to be in there upside down. And we're going to mold the drag first. Okay, so what we do in this case, we take one of these what they call pattern boards. And this pattern board uh, we don't want to use as a bottom board. It doesn't have any cleats on the bottom of it. It's, it's perfectly flat. Okay, so we're going to put this between our cope and our drag. And, uh, and then we're going to put our, our pattern into the flask. Situate this uh, pattern in here so that we can get our sprue, I think right about here, come across and hit the side of the casting. What we're looking for is you want to probably gate your part right into the thickest part of the casting so that if it wants to shrink, it's going to sh it, you're going to put a little riser out there and the gating system can feed metal to the uh, casting as it cools. Okay. So I think I, the other thing you have to take into account here is that this tail is sticking off the bottom of the uh, flask a little bit. And we've got to be able to take the transition from where that level of the tail is to, to the edge of the flask. You'll kind of see that a little bit. We want to transition this nice and smoothly. So we want to get it kind of away from the edges a little bit. Okay? Kind of put it out in the center. At no time should you ever have a pattern closer than an inch away from the side of the flask. If it's closer than that, the metal could possibly uh, run out onto the floor and also it's going to damage the flask. This, this flask is made out of aluminum and if the metal flows out through the, between the edges of the flask, uh, it's going to tend to melt the, melt the flask, okay? Not a good thing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the parting powder on our pattern. You notice that we're doing the drag first, the pins are facing down. Okay. And the same process you saw before, except when we flip this over, we're going to have to carve this airplane back out of the sand. It'll all be covered up, and we have to carve down to the parting line. Get all the old sand out of, the, out of your riddle, and some nice new sand. Which new sand? It gets humor in it. Okay. Careful when you're, if you do that with your hand in that matter, if there's any sharp particles in the sand, they're going to cut your hand, so don't do it too violently. Okay, there might be little sharp pieces of aluminum. Okay, so we've got enough sand in here to cover our pattern. We're going to take our fingers and gently push around, get it back down slightly, then we can push a little harder. And go ahead and put another layer of sand on. Okay. Okay, don't leave your hand on the flask like that. The reason why you don't want to leave your hand on there like that is if you hit inside your hand, you're going to cut your hand really bad. Okay, see that scar right there? That's proof. Okay, so don't leave your hand on there.
Okay, use the flat end again. Okay, you can sprinkle a little bit of sand on here so that when you put the bottom board on, if there's any low spots, they're going to be supported by sand. Okay, at this point we're going to take the coat back off, take off the parting, the, the uh, pattern board. And you see our, our, our airplane's kind of disappeared here. Let's kind of see where it is. And what you're going to do is you're going to use this, this spoon to come and carve down to the workpiece, okay, or the pattern. We want to get to the parting line, remember. So you have to remember where the parting line is. You also want a nice gentle transition from the edge of our airplane to the edge of the mold. Otherwise, the sand can break out there. Remember, we're going to have to try to get this airplane out of here at some point. Nice gentle transition. Okay, there's the tail. You have to kind of remember where that parting line was. Always memorize your part before you start putting it in the sand because then you can't see it after it's in the sand. directly on the previous layer of sand. Therefore, we have to have party powder all over the sand as well as the, uh, the pattern. Also, we're not going to be able to estimate where to poke the sprue in here, so we should probably actually set the sprue in there right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to take and put some party powder on. Okay, and then figure out where I want the metal to flow. I think I'm going to come in here and come here with the sprue. The reason why I go in two directions here is that if there's any junk in the uh, in the runner here, it's going to possibly get removed in the gate. So I'm going to stick the sprue in there so that uh, it's going to stay up. I go in about you know, maybe a half an inch to an inch deep so that it'll stay up. So now I have the gating system marked. I'm going to put the coat back on and riddle some more sand. Okay, the sand around the sprue should be the tightest packed sand because that's the the sand that's going to come in contact with the metal and uh, it has to have the best strength properties. So make sure you pack around the sprue. Make sure you can ram behind the sprue too. Don't put the sprue too close to the edge. Okay, so push it around the sprue. You can angle the sprue in a little bit so you have enough room to put your uh, pouring uh, basin. super gorilla hard at this point because you've got the sand underneath it and you're going to start deforming the sand. So ram it up uh, pretty hard but not as hard as you were when you're using the match plate. Okay.
Okay, we're going to cut our uh, sprue hole again, our pouring basin. Don't be afraid if a little sand goes down the hole, you're going to take this apart and you can clean it out afterwards and blow the sand back out the hole. Just don't stick your finger down the hole and get it all compacted in there. Okay. And we're going to lift the coke off, lift it straight up. Okay. There's that sand, we'll get rid of it. Okay, you can see that our, um, our impression where we cut our gating system is going to actually come out in the cope as well as in the drag. Here's our sprue, okay? And then over here in the drag, the pattern is still there. So hopefully if we, if we carved our parting line correctly, we can just pull this out now and it'll come out no problem. Uh, first thing I want to do though is carve the, uh, the gating system into the, into the casting. I think I'm going to put a small riser right here so that uh, I can feed this casting in a thick part here. So I'm going to put that in the cope and then I'm going to put all my gating uh, in the drag here. So I can turn this on its side a little bit so that a lot of the sand falls out. The reason why the metal goes past here is so that any of the junk can possibly be, get caught in the end of that runner there. Okay, so uh, we're also going to make an enlargement here at the bottom of the sprue, the sprue well, or sprue basin. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put it back down and I'm going to tap it a little bit. And hopefully it'll come right out of here. Try to find a place you can grab it and pull it up evenly. Wiggle a little bit as you go. It's kind of like the operation game. Now you don't want stuff to drop down in that tail area there. That's why I, I left the pattern in there until I carved all this sand out. I'm going to turn it on its side again so that I can clean the sand out of there. Okay, that little bridge of sand we need to clean out, otherwise the metal won't be able to get in your casting. Okay, don't blow it on it too much because every time you blow on it, you're blowing sand off and you're evaporating uh, some of the moisture. But you do have to get any chunks of sand out of there. Okay, so let's do the, the, the cope here. Put a little riser right here. Okay, and then a little connection. Okay, blow out the sprue. And the metal is going to come in here. It's going to go along there. We're going to fill this riser up, go into the casting, and hopefully fill it up. Now, the other thing we want to do is these, these wings are so thin that there could be some air back pressure. As the, as the metal comes into this mold, you're going to have back pressure from the air that's in the mold. So what we're going to do is we're going to poke a couple little vents in the tip, at the tip of the wing so that the air can escape out through the cope of the, uh, of the mold. Okay, uh, I'm going to poke a couple vent holes with this eighth inch uh, raising rod through the cope. Make sure you do the cope side, otherwise the metal will come out the bottom of the mold. Okay, so the other thing you want to be careful of is when you poke it through, it's going to come out the back side, you know, a lot larger than it went in the front side. Okay, so don't get that too near the sprue. Well, this one over here is kind of near the sprue, so I'm going to angle it a little away from the sprue so that hopefully we won't have that problem. Let's see. See, we came out kind of in a different area. You don't want to pour metal down that uh, vent hole. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is going to make a little passageway, a little to that uh, vent so that the air can escape through the vent hole. 
Okay, I'm pretty much done here. Now, you want this mold to be open as little time as possible. The longer the mold is open, the, uh, the more chance that this is going to dry out and your, your mold is going to start to fall apart on you. So, put it together right away. Okay. Don't drop any sand. Put it together the right way because it'll screw the mold up otherwise. So you want this, okay. you want your screw hole, okay? You want that to line up with your uh, screw base. So you can actually watch it as it goes together. If you see white, that's not good because you're see seeing parting powder. You haven't carved that area yet. Okay, we're ready to pour this one. So we're gonna go over the foundry, melt our metal, and pour. Okay, so we have our molds here, we put them on the floor, We're getting ready to pour. We want to make sure that our sprue hole, or our pouring basin is pointing toward the direction that we're going to pour from. We're going to pour from this side of the, uh, of the mold. Okay, the other thing we want to do is we're going to put a weight on top of here. The weights are found over by the, uh, over by the pump. You can put a weight right on top of the mold, right behind your pouring sprue, and gently set that on there. Okay. If you have a thin casting, you're going to have to pour that casting at a higher temperature. Uh, this airplane should be poured around 1300, maybe 1325 degrees. The, uh, the bars should be poured around 1250 degrees because they're a lot thicker. So if, you, if you're unsure what temperature to pour the casting at, let me know. But you should write on a piece of paper and stick it under your weight what pouring temperature it should be. Otherwise, uh, you know, someone could pour any temperature metal in there. If it doesn't come out, don't come crying to me because you didn't put your pouring temperature on there. The second thing you're going to want to do, and I forgot to show you this, is you need to scribe your initials into the mold, especially for the bars. You scribe them actually right in the cavity. You have to write them backwards. Okay, so that's a test of uh, your ability to transpose figures. You want to be able to write your name backwards or, or initials backwards in that bar. Otherwise, you will not be able to identify it. I've also forgot to mention that there's two bars in this mold. Remember, you're working groups of two for the screwdriver. So that means a group of four can make this uh, the, uh, the bar mold. Okay? Each person has to make an individual casting by themselves. So four people can make this. Uh, two people take one casting, two people take the other casting, your partner and yourself. On your individual one, you have to make your own casting. Okay, you gotta put the proper safety equipment on. You need an apron, spats, which are the things on their feet, and uh, Helmet and gloves. Make sure everything goes back in there when you're done, too. Okay, they're going to take a temperature. We want to pour around, probably around 1350, you want to take it out of the furnace, or maybe 1375, so that we can actually get the metal to the, the, to the mold with enough temperature left. Okay, be real careful with the molten metal. The uh, crucible is, is just sitting on the pedestal and could fall over very easily. So you have to make sure that you keep the, uh, the shank level. You can see there's a pin. Chad's got a pin in his hand. Yeah, like those, though. Right. Lift it up together. Make sure to keep it level. You got to rest it on your knee or something. And then there's a, a retaining pin. Lift together. Okay. Just set it, set her down, and then take a temperature.
Oh, 1325 would be good. You can probably go. By the time you pick it up and, and pour it, you're okay. Go ahead. Make sure to keep. Run out, run out, run out, run out. Okay, stop pouring. Okay, yeah, come on over here and pour the rest of those. We could have waited a little bit to pour those ones, but it's okay. We're gonna pour off the ingots so that we can put the metal back in the furnace and melt it fairly easily. Nate, watch your foot starting on fire. I smell something funny. We need another ingot. Okay, uh, this is an example of not having the mold closed all the way. Somehow that happened. Oh yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, but uh, that's, that. I don't know. I don't know, maybe we moved it or something. Okay, the metal is solidified and we've taken the, the part out of the mold. And uh, here it is over here. We've got some extra metal around it. The airplane kind of came out because it was all in the, in the bottom part of the mold in the drag. But uh, the cop side didn't come out so good because the metal ran out. So uh, not a super good casting. Make sure you put your, your mold halves together and look between there before you pour it. Um, we're still waiting for the other casting to, uh, to solidify completely. It's a lot thicker, so we have to wait. But you can see the metal is actually solid now. Okay, at this point, we're going to uh, open the mold for the bars, bar casting. So these probably came out a little better than the previous mold. Hey, hey. Well, okay. Done. Now, don't get too excited because the drag always looks good. If you're going to have a defect, it's going to be in the cold side of the mold. So what you're going to have to do is take it back to your box over here, shake it out in the box, and uh, we'll see if it actually came out. So don't get too excited yet. You can see that the sand around where we cast, there's kind of a, a boundary layer there. And what happened there is all the moisture evaporated from the sand and drove back into the sand. Okay, so this area right next to the casting has no moisture, and the area behind that has actually way too much moisture. It's called a mud layer. Okay, good. Now look at this. You can see that the riser fed metal to the rest of the casting because it's got a big crater. It looks like a uh, volcano. And you know we didn't carve that into there. The riser fed liquid metal to the casting so these castings look good and the riser will be melted back down. So this is a good casting. Besides the fact that we forgot to put our initials on it so that we know whose castings they are. Okay. As far as cleanup, we need to clean up all the sand Make sure it's all back in the bins. Don't sweep garbage into the sand. The sand is actually uh, a fairly expensive commodity, so we want to actually preserve our sand, not having a lot of uh, you know, leaves and, and uh, pieces of wood and such in, in the uh, sand. Okay. Um, also, make sure any hot metal is put away. Careful not to touch hot metal. Use gloves. 